Hey there, what's up? I thought about another thing that I do in my game that might be useful to other people, and it's shaking. It's actually the camera shake that happens uh, specifically in my game when the announcer, which is the devil, because you're trying to escape from hell, when the announcer says something, then everything shakes and kind of slows down, and it gives a really cool effect. So let's, first of all, see it in action. Um, I have a, a debug button that will just make the camera shake, and it kind of, you know, it also slows the game down, so you can kind of see it just shaking. If you consider that plus the sound that you're currently not hearing, the anchor saying something bombastic as a devil would, it gives you a really good effect. Um, please ignore everything else in terms of the art in the actual game, because it's definitely an alpha stage and not completed. So this shake, uh, it's pretty simple to do, and that's what we'll, we'll be going, going over today. There's a million way of doing, million ways of doing a shake. You could just change the transform. There's a million ways, let's not go over it. I'm gonna show you what I use, and I actually took something from uh, the procedural examples from the Unity Asset Store. This is completely free, it's by Unity. You could get it, just look up procedural examples. And here, if you look at the package contents, hopefully you can see it's a bit small, is Perlin.cs. This is the uh, an implementation of Perlin Shake, which is a, something that we'll, we'll, we'll talk about in a second. I'm actually, I'm, I'll show you the code. Um, it's an implementation, I got it from here, so this is where you get it, it's the only thing that I didn't code myself. And all of these examples are really cool, so specifically for procedural examples, you should check it out, it's a really cool uh, little thing that you could get for completely free in the asset store. All right, so let's just look at the code. First of all, we'll take a look at Camera Shaker. Okay, I, I made the code a little bit bigger, maybe even, even bigger than that, just to be able to show you. So we'll go over the entire code, it's very simple, but I wanna focus on the actual shake more than anything else, so let's start with that. And this is, um, this is what actually does the shaking. So I'm doing, it's on the camera, this specific script is not modular in any way, because I just wanted to test it out with the camera, it works very well, as you can see, camera main transform position, all right? And I have the original position, which I get once I tell, tell the script, please shake. Uh, I get the original position where we start from, and then I add, um, I add something to it, okay? I use scale, which is from uh, vector3.scale. Let's take a look at what it does. It multiplies two vectors component-wise. This means that every component in the result is a component of, of um, A multiplied by the same component of B, okay? A is the first vector, B is the second vector. So the outcome of this print will actually be a vector3 with one by uh, one times two, two times three, and three times four, all right? That's what it does. It's a way of multiplying vectors. We won't go into the math. That's just what it does, okay? And what I use here is the shake range, which is currently one, 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 okay? You can increase this to get a, a longer range of shake. Experiment with this and you'll see what happens. And we use smooth random dot get vector two with the shake speed and we the shake speed gets decreased every time. All right, gets decreased minus one every time. So um, we use smooth random dot get vector two. What the hell is this? This is where Perlin comes into effect, the Perlin.cs. This is something that I did not write. It's an implementation of the Perlin shake, if you will. Uh, Perlin is the guy who invented the Perlin shake. It's not a Perlin shake, it's, it's just the Perlin, Perlin algorithm for uh, exactly what this class name is, a smooth random. So it is a random, but it's smoothed out in a way that, that makes it feel a little bit better. Again, you could do a shake in a million different ways. This just tries to do a random in a very specific way. You'll get to, you'll be able to, to see this for yourself once you implement this, once you put this in and just use it. Uh, the examples also show it very nicely of how it works. And um, I decided to use it. So yeah, the, the thing that I wrote here that's a bit different, you actually don't get the vector two, you just get vector three. I just wrote this function and the difference is just that I removed the last one because I didn't want my Z values to change. Um, not that it matters too much at this point. I mean, you don't really need this, but I just, I did get vector two instead of just get vector three. It's just, yeah. Um, I'm not getting into this because I did not write this and there's no point. This is, as far as you're concerned, a black box that you're just using, it's a plugging. That's what a plugin pretty much means. So let's go over camera shake. Um, just to, to close the actual shaking, shake speed, I multiply it by minus one, and the shake range, I also multiply the X by, by minus one. I don't want it to, to ever go down, only go up. 
But what this means, the shake range, because it's all it's all positive, remember it's one one one, because it's positive, it means that this is let's my hands or my camera will always go to the right and up. Because that's that's where I'm actually going. What smooth random returns, what this actually returns is a vector um, that has zero point something. Okay, the, the zero point something is, is the range here. And by scaling it with one, 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 I get something between zero and one, and I add this to my original position to get this, this random effect. If I'll only be positive, they'll always go up and right. Okay, the positive uh, axes. So I multiply by minus one in order to get that back and forth type movement. Okay, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. It works very well as you as you manage to see. And I also wrote a couple of, of, of things here that you could you know potentially do, add a little bit of rotation, add a, a one white frame that kind of, you know, we're shaking now. It kind of puts you in the mood of that. It's possible things, you know, to on top of it, I also have another line here. I tried to do something and uh, actually deleted a lot of other lines, a lot of other experiments that I tried to do it. This is the way that it works right now and I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, let's just go over the rest of it. It's very simple. I got the shake speed, the shake range, uh, the timer, which actually counts up to shake time. Okay, a boolean of shake true or false. Are we actually running something? And the original position. Uh, this is just implementing a singleton in Unity, which is you know get instance return i, and if it's null, i is this in awake. Okay, and this is this is placed somewhere in my scene so that it'll exist. Okay, because this is a mono behavior. Not going to get into singleton and unity any more than what I just said. And in update, this is the test. Okay, by pressing K, it, it shakes. And um, if we're shaking right now, and the camera shake is the, the function that I actually call, and note that I'm also putting time scale 0 0.2 to allow it, uh, you know, that slowing effect that's pretty cool. That's why I'm changing the time scale. And that's why when I do shake timer, only when shake timer is bigger than my shake time, and I make sure to multiply it by time.timescale because it's not one, it's different, then only then do I actually stop false, zero, one, blah, 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 getting back to original X and Z positions. I'm actually keeping the Y movement because in my game, the camera keeps going up. Okay, so I'm just, whatever happened in Y space, I don't mind. And uh, this is the actual shake, and that's it. That's, that's pretty much the script. It's very non-modular because I'm actually only moving the camera. Um, and it worked very well and it's fine. What I later on did is actually shaker, which can take anything that you give it, okay, any transform to shake, and um, it shakes that transform. I currently use this for the imps. When you actually bump into the imps, the, the enemies in the game, they actually shake a little bit. It gives you a little bit of a good feeling. Uh, they shake very, very little, but it gives you that good feeling that something happened instead of just getting hit, they actually shake a little. And um, what the, the thing about this specific one, if, if we're, we're, you know, full disclosure, because it's a singleton as well, only one thing can shake. And the way I implemented it, only one thing can shake at a time. All right. Only one thing can actually, um, I mean, if, if I, I tell, tell it to shake and then tell something else to shake, the first thing stops shaking. All right. I just input the values here and then I do the shaking. Um, and uh, I make sure it's not null because I might still be shaking after that imp is destroyed. So I just, I want to make sure that it's not null specifically. Oops, I changed something. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's shaker. That's how I do shaking in my game. I think it works pretty damn well. I hope this has been useful for you. If you have any questions whatsoever, make sure to let me know in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time as I die and the game continues. Bye!